the first great invention of the last century, quickly turned to tragedy, and in doing so, set the tone for things to come, as each new mechanical and technological invention also lifted the lid on war, death, and destruction. Invasion, dictators. Man's inhumanity to man. Famine, plague, anxiety, loneliness. A forgotten children's pain. <laughs> Annihilation, tragedy, darkness, isolation, a world surrounded by fear and despair. First of all, I want to introduce you to this place called Fatima. It is a small town in the province of Liria in Portugal. And the interesting thing about the name Fatima, especially in the Muslim world, is the fact that Muhammad's daughter was called Fatima. Some centuries ago, there was a Muslim chief whose young daughter was also called Fatima. A young Catholic man fell in love with her and renamed all his land after her. She stayed and married him and converted to Catholicism. And it is this place with its Muslim background that became one of the most important places in the Christian world. And so we proceed to the main story. country is Portugal, the place Fatima, the year is 1916 and three little children, Jacinta Marto, age six, Francesco Marto, age eight, Lucia dos Santos, age nine. Lucy tells us that they were on, a, on this hill herding their sheep. They'd eaten their lunch. They usually had a lunch bag with them. They had said their prayers. These children not only said the family rosary at home each night, but they were also trained to pray when they were out on the hillside herding the sheep. They were relaxing and playing games and generally taking it easy when... Do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. He teaches the children a prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, who do not adore, do not hope and do not love you. children and their stories. Although it does remind me... Oh, come on, put up the pictures. Thank you. I heard before that in the world 
World War I, soldiers on both sides of the battle claim they saw numerous sightings of angels. In the Battle of Mom, British troops were severely outnumbered, but the Germans still retreated because, as one of them put it, angels, angels, they have stopped us. These sightings became known in legend as the White Cavalry. Anyway, back to the children. Maybe I shouldn't have doubted them so much. The children of Fatima had a second visit from the angel. It occurred at the well at the bottom of Lucia's garden. It was sometime in the summer of 1916, and it was their custom in the warm weather to bring the sheep home before lunch to take them out of the great heat. Suddenly, the angel appeared for a second visit. What are you doing? Pray, pray very much. Offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. How are we to make sacrifices? Make of everything you can a sacrifice and offer it to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which He is offended. Who will thus draw down peace upon your country? I am its guardian angel, the angel of Portugal. The third apparition of the angel also occurred at this spot. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. The children, taking things seriously now, had been saying the prayer the angel had taught them. When he came this time, the first thing he did was to teach them another prayer, which he said three times so they could remember. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly and I offer you the most precious body blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrageous sacrileges and indifference with which he himself was offended, and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary. I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. The children certainly remembered that prayer. On this, the third visit of the angel, he brought with him a chalice, which he left suspended in mid-air. And above the chalice was a host, the body of Christ. Take this and eat. This is my body, which has been given up for you. And from the host, drops of blood were falling into the chalice. Take this and drink. This is my blood, which is given up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men, repair their crimes and console your God. The angel then gave the host to Lucia. And the blood to Francesco. Jacinta impelled by the power of the supernatural that enveloped us we imitated all that the angel had done prostrating ourselves on the ground as he did and repeating the prayers that he had said. The force of the prayer
presence of God was so intense that it absorbed us and almost completely annihilated us. It seemed to deprive us even of the use of our bodily senses for a considerable length of time. During those days we performed all our exterior actions as though guided by that same supernatural being who was impelling us there too. The peace and happiness which we felt were great but wholly interior for our souls were completely immersed in God. Physical exhaustion that came over us was also great. Now at this time 1916. World War I was raging and the Russian Revolution was gaining momentum. But another revolution was taking place in Portugal. With the Republic having overthrown the monarchy, the early 20th century was a time of great change for Portugal. The revolutionaries saw the church as having sided with the state and so a period of religious persecution began with arrests and exile being enforced upon many Catholics. It was not a good environment for three children to start talking about angels. Something far more important than that occurred here to turn this battle into this one. Every year, millions of people come to this place of worship. Some go to reaffirm their faith. I, I felt some kind of call within myself, I suppose, that it was right to go to Fatima. Some are still searching for it. I'm just, just looking forward to seeing what it's all about. And some go in thanksgiving for what they already have. I just heard so much and I heard about the annual youth pilgrimage and uh, I just felt that this was the year to do it. I welcome. Whatever the reason, it can be quite a personal journey to embark on. Many people do have a spiritual awakening here in Fatima. Many others have been cured from physical and sometimes life-threatening diseases. Some just come to give thanks for the good things in their lives. Whatever the reason, all who come here agree. It is a place of great peace. The place was Rome, the year 1917. On the 13th of May, Monsignor Pacelli was appointed Archbishop and had to go to Germany to negotiate for peace. The Pope at that time, Benedict XV, wrote a letter to Catholics asking them to pray for an end to the war and he had also added an invocation unto the litany of our Blessed Lady. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. He was quickly answered eight days later. It was the 13th of May, 1917, when a lady, saying she was from heaven, first appeared to the three little children. It was in this field called the Cova da Aria, in the parish of Fatima, that the three children, Lucia, Francisco and Jacinta, were herding their sheep on the morning of the 13th of May, 1917. Approaching midday, they were up where the front of the Basilica now stands. They were playing away, very much the same as before, when suddenly lightning flashed the children went to go home, hurrying their sheep before them, when more lightning struck, and suddenly, on a small holm oak bush in front of them, a lady appeared, more brilliant than the sun. Do not be afraid. 
I will do you no harm. Where are you from? I am from heaven. Shall I go to heaven too? Yes, you will. And Jacinta? She will go also. And Francesco? He will go too. But he must say many rosaries. Is Maria de Neves in heaven? Yes, she is. And Amelia? She will be in purgatory until the end of the world. Are you willing to offer yourselves to God and bear all the sufferings he wills to send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and of the supplication for the conversion of sinners? Yes, we are willing. Then you are going to have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. Our Lady then opened her hands for the first time, communicating to us a light so intense that, as it streamed from our hands, its rays penetrated our hearts and the innermost depths of our souls, making us see ourselves in God, who was that light, more clearly than we see ourselves in the best of mirrors. Then, moved by an interior impulse that was also communicated to us, we fell on our knees, repeating in our hearts, O Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. Then she began to rise serenely, going up towards the east until she disappeared in the immensity of space. The light that surrounded her seemed to open up a path before her in the firmament. And for this reason, we sometimes said that we saw heaven opening. Then she asked them to return to the same spot on the 13th day of each month for six successive months. Why did she pick the 13th day of the month? She didn't tell us, but we think we know. There are only very few dates recorded in the Christian Bible, and one of them happens to be in the book of Esther. And it is, surprise, surprise, the 13th. The Persian king in the 4th century before Christ married a beautiful Jewish girl named Esther. But there was a very bad man in court called Haman, who hated Jews, and he paid the treasury of Persia a lot of money to slaughter all the ordinary Jews in the country. And the date set for this was the 13th day of Adar, the last month of the Jewish year. When Esther heard this, she fasted and prayed in union with her people for three days. Then she went forward to plead on their behalf with the king. Because of Queen Esther's intercession, her people were spared on the 13th day of Adar, the actual date set for their massacre. Esther was delighted because she had managed to save her people. Now, significantly, the word Esther means star. Oh, come on, there's better representations of stars than that. Yes, that'll do, thank you. What is significant about Esther, meaning star, is that the lady always wore one on the bottom of her gown when she appeared to the children in Fatima. At Fatima, the lady appeared not once, but six times on the 13th day of each month in a supreme bid to help to save our civilization from ruin, much the same as Queen Esther had saved her people. In appearing to the three little children, it seemed that Our Lady wanted the children to help her, and so, on the 13th of June, 1917, she said to them, Pray the rosary every day and learn to read. Later I will tell you what I want. On this second apparition of the lady, she told Lucia that she would never forsake her. As she spoke these words, she opened her hands 
and from them streamed a light that penetrated to our inmost hearts. I think that on that day, the main purpose of this light was to infuse within us a special knowledge and love for the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Lucia agreed to learn to read. Francesco, who could see the lady but was not able to hear her, asked Lucia, Why did Our Lady have a heart in her hand, spreading out over the world that great light which is God? You are with Our Lady in the light, which went down towards the earth, and Jacinta was with me in the light, which rose towards heaven. That is because you and Jacinta will soon go to heaven, while I, with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, will remain for some time longer on earth. The children had already decided among themselves that they would keep the visits of this beautiful lady a secret between them. However, Jacinta, as I said, was only seven at the time, and like all seven-year-olds, she could not keep what she had seen a secret. After the first visit, she went home and told her mother, who went over and told Lucia's mother, who was very angry with her daughter for making up such stories, as was our parish priest. But Lucia would not deny what she had seen, and after the second appearance of the lady, word spread, and so did the local interest in the children, so that by the 13th of July, large numbers of people had heard about these apparitions, and about 2,000 people turned up in the Cova da Aria that day. We were there, five young men with our staves of wood, to protect my cousin Lucy, to protect the children. It was rumored there might be trouble. They were finishing praying the rosary when we got there, and we sat down. The children pointed, that's where the lightning came from before. And soon after, the lightning did come, a live lightning. Then they said, kneel in front of Our Lady and raise your hands. We were standing there in front of her like a piece of wood, afraid that something bad was going afraid. to happen. We were afraid. Lucia, Jacinta and Francisco knelt before Our Lady. Lucia asked, what do you want today? Lucia said, kneel, because Our Lady is coming. And Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco did kneel. <laughs> Some people thought it was a hoax. Others thought it might be about the end of the war. When the Lady appeared that month, she asked the children to... Continue to come here every month. In October, I will tell you who I am and what I want, and I will perform a miracle for all to see and believe. As before, the lady opened her hands, and rays of light penetrated the earth. This time, however, the children saw a sea of fire. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke now falling back on every side, like sparks in huge fires. Amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, the demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness to frightful and unknown animals, black and transparent like burning coals. The children were terrified, and trembling with fear, they looked to their lady for help. You have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. According to Lucia, the vision of hell filled Jacinta with horror. 
to such a degree that every penance and mortification was as nothing in her eyes, if it could only prevent souls from going there. Oh hell, oh hell, how sorry I am for the souls who go to hell, and the people down there burning alive like wood in the fire. Then shuddering, she knelt down and recited the prayer that Our Lady taught them. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us, save us from the fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need. Lucia has sometimes been asked, What sin offended God the most? Her reply was, The sins of the flesh. Showing the children hell is now called the first secret of Fatima. The lady then told them a second secret. The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a knight illuminated by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given to you by God, that he is about to punish the world for its crimes. You know something? Just before World War II, on the night of the 25th of January, 1938, the sky was illuminated with an unknown light. And coincidentally, just as the lady had told the children over 20 years earlier, Pope Pius XI was on the papal throne when Germany invaded Austria on the night of the 12th of March, 1938, a spark which was to ignite the second. Now, according to the children, this terrible tragedy could have been avoided. The Lady of Fatima had said to them, To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. One day, Lucia found Jacinta deep in thought and asked her what she was thinking about. About the war which is coming and all the people who are going to die and go to hell. How dreadful! If they would only stop offending God, then there wouldn't be any war, and they wouldn't go to hell. Now at this time, nobody thought of Russia as a threat to world peace. It was in economic and political turmoil, having overthrown the Tsar and his family. It could barely feed its people, never mind cause pain to the rest of the world, but under the guidance of some strong leaders. Communism, with its anti-democratic, anti-religious ethos, did spread, and with it the threat of a nuclear war that could have destroyed the world as we know it today. Now the popes had listened to the message of Fatima, and a number of them did attempt to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. On the 25th of March, 1984, in front of the special statue which Pope John Paul II had brought from Fatima, especially for the occasion. Dalla guerra nucleare, da un'autodistruzione incalcolabile, da ogni genere di guerra, he entrusted Liberace. the world and all nations to Mary's Immaculate Heart. Changes in the world order were quickly seen. Gorbachev came to power in Russia and worked with Reagan in America. These two leaders came and spoke with Pope John Paul II and shortly afterwards the Berlin Wall came down. In a time when no one ever thought it possible. All of which is a story in itself. I 
ironically for Christians, the abolition of communism occurred on the 22nd of August 1991, which was traditionally the old feast day of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, as well as showing the children hell and proclaiming that a light in the night would precede the next war, and that this would occur in Pope Pius XI's reign, the lady also told the children a third secret. However, this wasn't revealed to the world until the year 2000, and so we too shall move on for the time being, just to keep you thinking. The fourth apparition, which was to take place on the 13th of August, didn't happen for the children. Instead, this man, afraid of the commotion the children were causing, had them arrested and locked up. They were told to tell the secrets, or they'd be boiled in oil, and never see each other again, and other such horrific things. And they were thrown in the cells, where they got the other prisoners praying they were only eventually released on the 15th of that month, still refusing to tell the secrets or to take back the story that they had seen a lady. They must have been really causing the governor a lot of trouble to get that type of treatment. Instead, the lady appeared to the children on the 19th of August when they were least expecting it. In fact, little Jacinta was not with her brother Francesco or Lucia at that time. My sister Jacinta had been in jail, so she had lice on her head and our mother was treating her. That's the reason she stayed at home and I was with the others. Lucia saw something moving in the sky. It was Our Lady. She was approaching. Lucia asked me to get Jacinta, quickly. I went and whispered in Jacinta's ear. Lucia said that you should go there, to Valinos, and be with her. They said they had seen Our Lady, but I didn't see anything. They said Our Lady had appeared. And Jacinta took a small branch of grapevine to bring home. When she arrived at Lucia's house, she said to Lucia's mother, Oh, aunt, we saw Our Lady in Valinos. She could not believe, but she smelled a small branch and felt its wonderful smell. The message given that month was... Pray, pray very much, and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell, because there are none to sacrifice themselves and to pray for them. And so the children began to enforce sacrifices upon themselves. They stopped eating, preferring instead to give their food to the sheep. They still went out on the streets, even though the attention they received was often too intense for them. Remember how young and scared they must have been. They tied rope tightly around themselves in reparation for sinners and they often would refuse to drink on the hottest of days. There are still some people who see sacrifice as very important. Well, there's a saying that if, if, the more you give, the more you gain. So for you to gain something, you have to give. So if you want something from God, you have to sacrifice something like you're sacrificing food like automatically giving to God so he'll give you 10 times more. Well I think sacrifice is really really important um, in people's lives like nowadays suffering is looked upon as something really really bad um, and that you should do everything you can to stop suffering but I think if you have the attitude that suffering really has a meaning and then you can offer sacrifices for them like the children in Fatima were tiny 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 but they saw the value in making sacrifices for souls and how it can help people. So I think there's a real value, to, and to, especially in today's society, in making sacrifices and offering up your suffering for other people. Sacrifice is still very much 
a part of the message of Fatima. One public display that many take on in Fatima is the walking on the knees while saying the rosary. It might sound easy, but many are bloodied and sore as a result. It is a humbling yet fulfilling experience and one that cannot be mocked at until crying. There's also quite a nice story behind it. Lucia's mother, who could not believe that her daughter had talked to a lady from heaven, fell seriously ill, and the family thought she was dying. Lucia, through praying the rosary, pleaded with Our Lady to cure her mother. The mother was cured. Now, Lucia had promised the Most Blessed Virgin that if she granted what was asked, Lucia would go for nine days in succession to the place of the apparitions, together with her sisters, pray the rosary and go on their knees from the roadway to the home oak tree. Lucia's mother, who knew her cure had been miraculous, still could not, try as she might, believe her daughter. Many others believed a lady was appearing to the children, and the crowd was larger than ever on the fifth apparition on the 13th of September, 1917, and everybody had requests for the children. The message this month was the same as always. Continue to pray the rosary in order to obtain the end of the war. But she also went on to tell the children that God is pleased with your sacrifices. He does not want you to sleep with the rope on, but only to wear it during the daytime. She also told them she would I will cure some, but not others. In October, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. Before rising as usual and disappearing. the Sanctuary Square of Fatima, one of the biggest and busiest sanctuary squares in the Christian world. But in 1917, this place was totally different. On the 13th of October, about 70,000 people turned up here in appalling weather conditions. Many of those 70,000 were already firm believers of the Children's Lady. But others, to put it mildly, could be called cynics. They had come from near and far, some in faith to witness the miracle the lady had promised to perform that month, some in hope that no such miracle would occur so the children's claims could be dismissed. They crowded into the field, which was a sea of mud, in anticipation of what? They didn't know, but in anticipation of something or nothing. The children saw her. What do you want of me? I want to tell you there's a chapel is to be built here in my honour. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Continue always to pray the Rosary every day. The war is going to end and the soldiers will soon return to their homes. I have many things to ask you. The cure of some sick persons, the conversion of sinners, and other things. Looking very sad, Our Lady said, Do not defend the Lord our God any more, because he is already so much offended. Then, opening her hands, she made them reflect on the sun. And as she ascended, the reflection of our own light continued to be projected on the sun itself. The 70,000 present there followed Lucia's gaze, and they all saw something quite extraordinary. The sun began to spin in the sky, and then repeatedly fall to the ground in a multitude of colours. It terrified the people below, and many ran. The phenomenon lasted 12 minutes, and 
Even people up to 30 miles away saw it and believed. Those of everyone there, as well as the ground, instantly dried up, and the people gave praise for what they had seen. I looked at the sun and saw it spinning like a disc, rolling on itself. I saw people changing color. After midday, the sun started teasing and teasing and teasing. Everybody was frightened. Oh my God, everybody was frightened. And the colors appeared, like a rainbow, near the bottom of the hill. We thought we would die, but thanks God, nobody died. And we saw a shadow, a shadow, and it was bright like lightning, lightning on the north. I beheld the sun spinning at great speed, and very near me. I had once thought I'm going to die. My mother always argued, saying that Our Lady couldn't make miracles for everybody to see. She could make miracles, but not for everybody to see. During the miracle, everybody knelt down on that wet earth and everything. Everybody knelt down and, and was screaming, asking for mercy, and saying, Miracle, miracle. Then my mother believed. Everybody was amazed. I saw the sun coming down, feeling that it was falling into the ground. At that moment, I collapsed. This extraordinary event, seen by everyone with deep emotion, is now described as the miracle of the sun. It was confirmation of the truth Ladies' Apparitions at Fatima. In chapter 12 of the Book of the Apocalypse, the last book of the Bible, our Blessed Mother is referred to as the woman clothed with the sun. Now while the miracle of the sun was taking place, the three children were witnessing a different scene. We beheld Saint Joseph with the child Jesus and Our Lady robed in white with a blue mantle beside the sun. Saint Joseph and the child Jesus appeared to bless the world for they traced the sign of the cross with their hands. When a little later this apparition disappeared I saw Our Lord and Our Lady. It seemed to me that it was Our Lady of Dolors. Our Lord appeared to bless the world in the same manner as St. Joseph had done. This apparition also vanished, and I saw Our Lady once more, this time resembling Our Lady of Carmel. During the first apparition, on the 13th of May, 1917, the Lady requested, Pray the Rosary every day. She continued to make this request until the 13th of October, 1917, when she said, I am the Lady of the Rosary. Now many people today ask, what's so important about the Rosary? Why pray the Rosary? The Rosary is a weapon against the temptation of Satan. From the very moment of the first fall of man in the Garden of Eden, God spoke to the serpent in chapter 3 in the book of Genesis. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. She will crush your head, and you will lie in wait for her heel. Just as in the Bible, the young David used something as simple as a sling to slay the giant Goliath. The simple prayer of the Rosary is a more powerful weapon than many imagine. The little pebbles of the Rosary beads are a mighty spiritual force, and the battle is raging at the level of the spirits, the good spirits against the bad spirits. We pray the Rosary 
in conjunction with our powerful mother. I think, I personally think that the rosary is one of the most powerful prayers. Uh, Our Lady has said that it can stop natural disasters, it can prevent wars, so I trust in her word. I, I think I, it's actually a very modern thing now. It is old, and if it worked for the Convention of Russia, it worked for everything. It's good to pray a rosary every day. Our Blessed Lady did ask the three children to say after each decade of the rosary beads, Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need. It's interesting to note that the last image that the children saw of Our Lady as the miracle of the sun was taking place, was Our Lady of Carmel. Now Lucy was very familiar with this image because in the parish church there's a fine big picture of Our Lady of Carmel. The sacramental scapular is always linked back to Our Lady of Carmel. Those that are enrolled in the brown scapular properly blessed by a priest and worn around the neck have been promised by Our Lady that provided they keep it on and try to live a good life they will receive great graces at the hour of their death. The brown scapular is a form of consecration to Our Blessed Lady. As one of the Carmelite nuns, when asked about the message of Fatima, stated prayer and trust and protection of Our Lady is very important. Mary continues to be concerned as a loving mother for all her children. Remember I mentioned the book of the Apocalypse? Well, many people believe that we are living in that time fight between good and evil is at its greatest. As with all fights, struggles and wars, whether they be religious, political, racial or class status, most of us live our lives blind and oblivious to it. And although millions of people visit Fatima each year, they are only a ripple in the vast river of Christians who have chosen to search for meaning in their lives through God. And as for what happened to the three children after their monthly apparitions had finished, well, the tabernacle in this church is the original tabernacle before which the children of Fatima prayed very frequently. In particular, Francisco spent many, many hours praying in front of the tabernacle. He had taken the angel's words of and console your God very seriously indeed. He never had another apparition of Our Lady. He did, however, see the devil again as one of those huge beasts that the children saw in hell, and this made him tremble with fright. Francesco spent all his days praying and making sacrifices to try and console Jesus, whom he saw so terribly hurt by our sins. Francesco died within two years of the apparitions. As promised, he was taken by Our Lady up into heaven. He was only 11 years of age. Lucy tells us in our memoirs, That night I said goodbye to him. Goodbye 
Francesco. If you go to heaven tonight, don't forget me when you get there. Do you hear me? No, I won't forget. Be sure of that. Then seizing my right hand, he held it tightly for a long time, looking at me. Do you want anything more? I asked him, with tears running down my cheeks too. No, he answered in a low voice, quite overcome. Goodbye then, Francesco. Till we meet in heaven. Goodbye. Jacinta also got a chance to say goodbye to Francesco. Before Our Lady came to take him to heaven, she confided to him the following messages. Give all my love to Our Lord and Our Lady, and tell them that I'll suffer as much as they want for the conversion of sinners and in reparation to the Immaculate Heart. Jacinta, too, was taken quickly, as promised by the lady, only a year after her brother Francesco. She was only nine years of age. A little while before going to hospital, Jacinta said to Lucia, It will not be long now before I go to heaven. You will remain here to make known that God wishes to establish in the world devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tell everybody that God grants graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tell them also to pray to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for peace. If I could only put into the hearts of all the fire that is burning within my own heart and that makes me love the hearts of Jesus and Mary so much. One day, Jacinta's mother asked her, What are you going to do in heaven? I'm going to love Jesus very much, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary too. Don't worry, mother. I'm going to heaven, and there I'll be praying so much for you. What does it matter if you die alone, so long as Our Lady is coming to fetch you? Both Francesco and Jacinta were beatified by Pope John Paul II in the year 2000, on the 13th of May. And for those who don't know, a beatification is a major step in the process involved in declaring someone a saint. They are the only children who ever passed away, having been told by the lady that they were going to heaven. Lucia was told by the lady that she was to remain on the earth. She became a nun. She learned to read as she had promised and has written memoirs on her experiences in Fatima, thus spreading the devotion of the Immaculate Heart, as the lady had asked her. Lucia saw the lady again a number of times. On the 10th of December 1925, in her convent at Pontevedra, Lucia saw the lady with the child Jesus. Look, my daughter, at my heart surrounded with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce me every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. You at least try to console me and say that I promise to assist at the hour of death 
with the graces necessary for salvation, all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months shall confess, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary with the intention of making reparation to me. On the 13th of June, 1929, Twelve years after the apparitions at Fatima, Lucia was in the convent chapel of the Dorothean sisters at Tui in Spain, when the lady came once more. Suddenly, the whole chapel was illuminated by a supernatural light. I could see a chalice and a large host suspended in air unto which drops of blood were falling from the face of Jesus crucified, as well as from the wound at his side. Our Lady was beneath the right arm of the cross. It was Our Lady of Fatima, with her immaculate heart in our left hand, with a crown of thorns and flames. Under the left arm, large letters as of crystal clear water, which ran down over the altar, formed these words, graces and mercy. I understood it was the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity which was shown to me. And I received lights about this mystery which I am not permitted. Remember that on the 13th of June in 1917, the lady announced that she was going to take Francesco and Jacinta to heaven soon. But to Lucia herself, she said, You are to stay here some time longer. Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. That sometime longer came to a close for Lucia on Sunday the 13th of February 2005 at 5.25 p.m. in her Carmelite convent at Coimbra in Portugal when she gave her soul back to God. Her last words were for the Holy Father, Our Lady, Our Lady, Holy Angels, Heart of Jesus, Heart of Jesus, we are going, we are going to heaven with our Lord, Our Lady, and the little shepherds. On the 13th of July, 1917, the lady gave the children the three secrets. The third secret was given in two parts. It was given in the form of a vision, a vision that many Christians today are still trying to decipher. In the first part of the vision, the children saw an angel. He held a flaming sword that looked like it would set the world on fire, but the flames died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated towards him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance! 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 In the second part of the vision, Lucy tells us they saw, as if in an immense light which is God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it, a bishop dressed in white. We had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men and women religious, going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough-hewn trunks, as of a cork tree with a bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city, 
half in ruins and half trembling with halting step, afflicted with pain and sorrow. He prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. And in the same way, there died one after another, the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross, there were two angels, each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs, and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. As with the vision of hell, it was a very disturbing scene for the three young children. One day, Jacinta called out to Lucia. Didn't you see the Holy Father? I didn't know who it was, but I saw the Holy Father in a very big house, kneeling by a table, with his head buried in his hands. And he was weeping. Outside the house, there were people. Some of them were throwing stones. Others were cursing him and using bad language. Poor Holy Father, we must pray very much for him. The vision was not understood for many years. It was finally revealed to the public in the year 2000, almost a century later. In May of 1981, May the 13th to be exact, the same day as the lady's first apparition at Fatima, the Pope was in a procession in St. Peter's Square in Rome when gunfire rang out. The Pope had been shot now remember, 1981 was before all the negotiations between the Pope and Reagan and Gorbachev, which stopped a terrible war. The world was still very much in danger at this time. Two bullets pierced the Pope from close range. One, in fact, deflected off him in what the Pope himself describes as the work of the hand of Mary. Medical experts still say the Pope should have died with that attempt on his life, but he didn't. And he directly acknowledges that it was the hand of our Blessed Lady that saved him on that day. He survived and forgave his would-be executioner, much in the same way as Jesus, over 2,000 years earlier, forgave those who put him to death. He survived and helped disseminate a very volatile situation. He survived and held fast to the doctrine of the Catholic Church, when it was less than popular to do so. He survived, and in the year 2000, he brought between two to three million young people together in reaffirmation of their faith in the biggest gathering of youth ever seen and recorded in Europe. The youth flocked into St. Peter's Square in Rome when the final days and hours of the life of Pope John Paul were fast slipping away. The youth wanted to be close to him when the final moment arrived for him to give his soul back to God. It was to be the first Saturday, the 2nd of April 2005, at 9.35 p.m., the evening vigil of that great feast of the Divine Mercy, when he breathed his last. Concerning the youth, he had whispered when he heard they were all praying for him, I have looked for you, and now you have come to me. Thank you. Yes, 
Pope John Paul II lived through the hour of Gethsemane and Calvary, of crucifixion and of his immolation. The Lord must have looked upon him as a most precious victim, immolated on the altar of his priestly sacrifice. The prophecies of Fatima seemed to be fulfilled in Pope John Paul II, the masterpiece formed in Mary's Immaculate Heart. One of the leading English authorities on Fatima is Father Andrew Apostoli. You know, this taping we've been doing is uh, for the sake of attracting young people to be acquainted with the message of Our Lady of Fatima, who she is and the important message she gave so that we can have peace in the world. This is a world that young people are going to be growing up in. This is a world that they're going to be spending 60 and 70 more years of their lives. So we want to work for that peace, that, that they can inherit a world where peace and God's love has a, a very powerful influence. And so we've received a call from our Blessed Lady. You know, Sister Lucia has written a book called Calls from the Message of Fatima. She had received so many letters, questions, from uh, people wanting to know how they can best live out the message of Fatima. And so she couldn't answer all these personal letters, so what she did was wrote this book entitled Calls from the Message of Fatima. And it contains, in a sense, the heart of Our Lady's message. A wonderful book. I recommend it to all of you. Read it, meditate on it, study it, and put it into practice above all and you will be then not only familiar with what Our Lady is asking, you'll be actually living it from day to day. So now it's time to sum up the call to Fatima. An impossible task. I was given a retreat to university student and I was given some very good advice. Don't give them wine watered down. Give them the faith in all its beauty and all its vigor and all its demands. Before I came out, I think I had a different idea of Fatima and the message of Fatima. I've, I've gone and packaged holidays to New York and the Grand Canaria, and of course, out there you'll have great fun. But out here you'll have great fun, and you'll meet, you'll meet lifelong friends. You'll, you'll go to places like the beach, you'll go on day trips, and it's just as good. But the difference here is that you find real peace, real joy, and that's not kind of that's not just making light of it. You really, really will. I came here to say thanks for my baby, my healthy baby. Her name is Jacintha. This is my daughter. down here, you've got 200,000 people attending a Mass. Families, mothers and fathers, the children on their shoulders. The children are just thoroughly enjoying it, you know. Waving off Our Lady with the little white hankies at the end, to me, like, that was just, you know, breathtaking. It's a very powerful message, especially the rosaries are so powerful. Not just the rosary, of course, it's a bigger message. 
it's about the family. It's about it is about loving each other and it's about unity as well, you know. Immaculate heart will be your refuge and a way that will lead you to God. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph.